awesome. Thank you. Hi, Martin. Hi, Neil. Hi, Martin. Neil. Okay, Jackie. Well, we're glad you're with us, even though you won't be on video. Laura, how do you want to handle uh, questions that you may get? Do you want me to watch the chat and let you know when there's questions or how would you like to do that? Well, yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just holler and, and do one of these. Perfect. Okay. Let's wait a couple more minutes. We've got uh, several more people. Um, registered, so we want to wait for them to come on in. I'm just so excited about tonight's session. Yeah, me too. This is going to be good. Good to yeah, have right Laura back. back. Yes, <laughs> we've missed her, and Jackie too. Yes. Things have gotten busy in your world. We should have some interlude music here. You know, I was I played some last week and and then we flipped right over. I should put on some some music. Let me see what I can find here. You may not want to hear what I have in my phone. Oh dear. That's nice. How about a little Grateful Dead? I don't think so, Neil. <laughs> yeah. I'm too much of an old lady. I like the old standards. Okay, well. Ready? Yeah, I think everybody, uh, let's get started and I'll let late folks come on in. Fred, take it from here. Well, we're delighted to uh, to have you all here tonight. Uh, Greg will not be with us. He's teaching a class in China, not physically in China, but a Chinese class. And uh, so they uh, scheduled this without uh, consulting him. So. Uh, where he's here with us in spirit. Um, Laura Zahn is somebody that's familiar to you uh, because she's been with us through a good many of the sessions. And, and we're happy to have her tonight as a guest. Uh, and she has been, uh, she's, she's uh, with us about teaching culturally sensitive curriculums. And, you know, we've been getting into some curriculum discussion and also how Generation Teach works in racial injustice and inequity in education. She's inspired by a summer teaching fellowship to pursue a career in education. She founded Generation Teach in March 2014 to scale summer teaching fellowships in partnership with district and charter schools. Former Breakthrough Teaching Fellow, Instructional Coach, Executive and Program Director, National Board Member, and Chief Academic Officer, Laura, has served as a middle and high school teacher, a middle school principal, school improvement consultant, and uh, with the uh, uh, New Hampshire, the New Hampshire Department of Education School Improvement Grant uh, Consultant. Uh, she's a recipient of a Paul Douglas Teaching Fellowship she graduated summa cum laude with a BA in English and Humanities from Messiah College, holds an MA in Liberal Studies from Dartmouth, and an MS in, uh, in Educational Administration from National University, as well as experienced educator credentials in English grades 5, 12, and K-12 through principal leadership. So delighted to have you with us, Laura. So go for it. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you all. I have missed you. I was telling Lori and Fred that we launched a leadership residency at Generation Teach. So it's 
almost every Wednesday night for six hours. So after that, I haven't been able to get away Thursday nights. You can only miss so many family dinners without earning ire around here. So it's good to be with you tonight. And I appreciate the opportunity to share some of my experiences with you and talk about your experiences in education. And as a uh, Fred shared, I, I've been in education for a long time. I was one of the kids who grew up playing school in the basement. You know, I went to first grade and I'd found my career. I went home and I let my brother know he was my student. So he's <laughs> two and a half years younger than I am. And every school vacation, after school, snow days, I saw these as great opportunities to teach him. I spent my allowance on workbooks for him and stickers to encourage his efforts. And he's over 40 years old now, and I don't think he's quite forgiven me for all the time I spent teaching him. But as I got older, I started to think, you know, I really want to work for educational, I want to work for justice, and I want to change things in the world. And I think the way to do that is to become a lawyer and maybe a Supreme Court justice. So I turned away from thinking about education and decided I was going to be a lawyer. And the irony is that, of course, it was a teacher who taught me about the Supreme Court that inspired me to think about law. But I was putting education aside, I was going to go into law, and that would be a way to improve the world until I got to be a senior in high school. And the summer after my senior year of high school, I was a summer teaching fellow. So I taught in a summer learning program for middle school kids for six weeks. I had my six kids in my classroom. And I kind of went into the experience feeling like I was probably going to be a pretty good teacher. You know, I had all that practice in the basement and I was a good student. So probably my kids would love me. So you can imagine my surprise and consternation about three weeks into the program when I got a typewritten note. So this was 1992. So kids actually used typewriters. Remember back in these days, right? <laughs> and the student wrote to me and he said, dear Laura, your class is more boring than a 48 hour documentary on Q-tips. Change it <laughs> or else. Signed your worst nightmare. I couldn't believe it. I was horrified. And at that moment, I realized law might not be the only challenging career option out there. Perhaps teaching could be a way, you know, that would be really challenging. But I was still committed to changing the world. So I went off to college thinking about law school until I read the book Savage Inequalities during my sophomore year of college. And in reading that book and learning about the persistent inequities in the United States that fall along racial and economic lines, I realized education can be a way to work for social justice and to work for change. So I became a teacher and I taught for a number of years and I moved to California and was leading a program out there and spending time with my students on field trips. When one day I was walking around a lake with one of my kids and she turned, she stopped, and she turned, and she looked at me, and she said, Laura, I wish I were white, like you. And it had never occurred to me that my student would feel that way. And I hadn't thought about what it was like to be a student of color in a school where most of the teachers are white, where the main characters in most of the books are white. At that time, all the presidents had been white. And I, I, I've told Jackie this before. I think subconsciously on some level, I thought people of color didn't want to be white. And that's why they chose to be people of color, which first of all, none of us choose what we are, right? Like, so what is that? But second of all, what messages was my student receiving? What messages are all of our kids receiving at school? And we're going to look at some of the demographics at school that have shaped some of my thinking about this. But at that time, I started thinking about how can I be part of changing not only what my kids experience at school, but also what school looks like for all students, for our students of color and also for our white students, because it was not good for me as a student not to have teachers of color. It wasn't good for me as a student not to learn the experiences of people of color. And it's left me going into the world with a lot of blind spots and assumptions that I didn't realize for many years. So that's my story and how I'm here. And what I'm hoping that we can do tonight together is reflect on some of our educational experiences as we're thinking about what does it look like to have educational experiences that are culturally affirming and that really create these authentic learning journeys for all of our kids. We're going to reflect back to our experiences. And then I thought we could spend some time practicing a couple strategies for continuing our learning journeys before reimagining 
what school could look like for all students. And I'll tell you some of the things we're doing at Generation Teach, which we try out during the summer, um, that might give you some ideas as well. So we will start by thinking about what we learned in school that is helpful to us today. So when you remember back to your years in school and you think about hmm, everything I did all those years, K-12 that I spent in a public school or a private school, and then maybe the years of college, what did you learn that you still use today? So if you could take a moment and jot some of those things in the chat, what stuck with you? For those of you without chat, if you're on your phone or your, uh, your tablet or something, uh, feel free to just unmute yourself and say what it is. I'm monitoring the chat, so feel free to just type away. Fred says, journalism and civics. I know what I learned was uh, the kind of teacher I did not want to be. And examples are important too, right? We learn from those. And if it's easier for people to unmute and say them, you can do that as well. Hey, Laura, while they're, they're writing these, I'd like to ask you a question. So what happened to the, your brother? What's he doing today? Oh, I'm going to his house on Sunday. He's doing well, married with three kids, just doesn't want me to teach him anything. <laughs> Jackie says she learned grammar, writing, and math. Jen says she learned, oh, Jen, good one, how to play fair, study hard, and participate in discussions. Wow, that was a good school district you had, Jen. Uh, Sydney. Sydney learned French and love of literature and civics. Oh, and Laura, I should say that Sydney's our, our resident attorney here. You're what I wanted to be. And you've got all the books. <laughs> and you're kind of what I ended up wanting to be in a way. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing some of these things. And I think what's interesting about it, when we think about what we actually took away from school, and some of these things are affective, right? The things that we loved, the ways we learned to be with others. And then, you know, and participate. Those are like the emotional skills and the social skills that we learned in school. And then there's some content that we took, right? Like I learned to read at school. Like that's a very important thing. Um, so we did this. So when we think about the purpose of public education, and I'd love for you to unmute and say uh, your thoughts on this. Has the purpose of public education changed at all since you were in school? In your mind, do you think of the purpose as being different now than it was when you were a student? Carol says that she learned writing and penmanship and writing and getting ideas on paper. In grade six, she learned how to help classmates write a classroom newsletter printed on purple dittos. Yes, those old mimeograph machines. Mm -hmm. Then journalism in high school. Yeah, I like that question, um, Laura, that you just asked us all. I don't know if the purpose has changed as much as the scope and the focus, perhaps. Laura, I, I need you to repeat the question because yeah, definitely. When, when, Lori wrote, when Lori read what I wrote, then I forgot what you said. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so the question, I'll, and that's a great point, I'll put it in the chat too. In your mind, has the purpose of education changed since you were in school? Um, and so, yes, so what, what we're learning, so more attention to social stuff to help kids survive psychically, right? We see schools having a bigger role that in the psycho, the social emotional development of kids. Um, and then how have schools maybe created consumers instead of learners? You know, has that changed? What are ways that you feel like mm, this is the way school should be now because the world has changed? Is there anything that's different in your, in your thinking about the purpose of school now? Don and Gail, since you just joined us, feel free to unmute yourself and toss in a comment. We're taking comments in chat 
or verbally. Do you mean just K through 12 or education as a whole? Let's say K through 12. Martin, did you have something? Yeah, I, I mean, I have the, I guess I, I start out with a fundamental problem with the whole concept of a purpose for education. Mm. I mean, it's, it's that, that supports an inference that it's centrally planned and coordinated um, and I don't see much evidence of that. You know, I think it serves many purposes. Um, and I mean, the, the, the thing that I think that's probably, from my perspective, that seems to be changed. Um, I mean, there were, if you look at like the last hundred years, there were two things that really shaped our culture and how we related to one another. You know, one was the draft. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost everybody served in, in, in the service in World War II. Um, that pretty much ended uh, after I escaped the draft in the 60s. Um, and the other was, was a common public education. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have any numbers to back this up. But, it, you know, when I was a kid, education passed the culture for good and ill we've you know we've we've pointed out lots of the deficiencies in in what was passed to us but now again i don't know the frequency but we've got we've got charter schools we've got lots of people who are uh, homeschooled uh and i don't know what effect it has but but i have to i have to believe that education is less effective at, at sharing the culture. And then we, and we also, you know, we try through the legislature, we try to put all sorts of things on ed education that uh, probably they're not well equipped to do. Uh, so I guess the, the, you know, the question touches on an, approach, a, an important issue, but, but I have trouble grappling with it. Thank you. Oh, that, that's very valuable. And it's, I think it's really helpful to see, you know, your perspective of how it's shifted over the years as well as your experience. So thank you. Can, can I share one other thing? It's, it's, it's not 100% on point, but it's close. I don't know how many of you read the Statesman Journal today, but there's an article buried in the first, you know, well, first section. Um, Fed leaders agree economics has racial disparity problem. And what it goes on to talk about is how, how the whole field of economics uh, has so few people of color in it that, that economic policies crafted by government add to, to the problems that already exist. And the, 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 the policy that they pointed out was um, you know, during the last administration, there was a policy to cut off stimulus before any inflation was seen uh, when they saw indicators that there might be inflation. And what, what that, the effect that that had, uh, that this administration is changing, is to cut off the benefits of economic recovery from the lowest income most diverse elements of our society. They're usually the last in line to get any benefit from an economic recovery. And if you cut off the recovery too early, they're simply denied those benefits. So the, our inability to educate people or interest people of color in, in, in the dismal art of economics and the inability to put people in positions of power means that the economic needs of whole uh, elements of our society are ignored in policy formulation. So it's, 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 it's not exactly what you're talking about, but it's another failing of the way we educate people and, and employ them. Sydney pointed out that certainly government and civics were viewed as critical where I believe they are not now. There is now at least attempts to add something besides white history and privilege. Jackie says the ideal is different, but the reality has not changed much. Right. Kaylin says teachers teach a lot of things that used to be learned at home, like manners and hygiene. Absolutely. And Jen agreed with that. 
there, I don't think there's ever been a black female, maybe not even a black or a person of color as a federal bank governor. I mean, they have a lot of influence on our policy. So, and I think, you know, this, this gets at the, a couple of things, right? So how we think about schools, how we invest in schools, and also what we teach in schools and how we teach in schools. So I want to, I want to take a look at that because one of the things we've talked about is how education can be part of the solution to the inequities and injustices we see in society, but education can also perpetuate the inequities and injustices we see in society. So depending on what we're teaching and how we're teaching it, we are either dismantling or we are fortifying things in society. Um, so I have an activity for us to do in a, in a breakout room to look at what we did and did not learn in K through 12 education. And I have some things that I didn't learn in K through 12 education. Um, and I would be interested for you to see if you learned them. And the way this will work is um, in a minute, Lori will send you to a breakout room. And when you get sent to your breakout room, you want, just want to pay attention to what number breakout room it is. So you're assigned to breakout room three um, or two or one. And then at the top here, let's see, it says one through 10. You can just go to the number of your breakout room. And it says breakout room two or breakout room three, okay? So that you have your own page to work on with your partner in your breakout room. And then what I'm going to have you do is a sort. So I've got different little post-its down here. And what I'd love for you to do is think about which of these things did you learn in K-12 public educations? And what did you not learn in K-12 public education? And what you can do is you can drag these things to the different categories to show what you learned and what you didn't. If you do not have the computer ability to do that, you, you don't have to, you can read through and talk about did I learn this in K-12 education or did I not learn it? And then think about what effect did it have on your thinking to learn this or not learn this? So to give one example, um, one of the things that I learned in, in my K-12 through education was the Black Panthers were scary. That, that is definitely a message I got in my K-12 education. Like they were angry and they were scary. So imagine my surprise when I learned, oh, the Black Panthers were formed to police the police because of the brutality against African Americans. And so they were there to make sure African Americans weren't killed by the police, a problem we still have today. And in fact, they were organizing free breakfast programs and TB clinics um, and education programs. They were doing summer programming for kids in their communities. I never learned that part, right? And so by not learning that part, I get the impression that organized Black people were scary. No one said that outright, but that was the impression I got from that. So what I didn't learn was as important as what I did learn because it filled in an improper, a false narrative in my mind. So I'd love for you to think through these and which of them, did you talk about this in school? Did you talk about it differently? And what did that make you walk away from school with? Because what we learn in school is as important as what we don't learn in school as well. So the link to this, I will put in the chat so that you can just um, click on it. And then Lori will send you to a breakout room with a couple other people so you can talk through these and, and look at them. Um, and then we will come back and talk about what you thought from that conversation. Any questions about what? Laura, how much time do you want folks to have to, to do this? Let's do 10 minutes if we can. Okay. Does everybody understand, um, uh, have access to the link so you can click on it and just go right over to this? Uh, Laura's just now posted it there. It's on Jamboard. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna send folks to your breakout rooms now. Thank you, Lori.